Hey, there we go. Good morning. You may be seated. We were singing that song earlier that said Yahweh, Yahweh. That's the covenant name of God. Aren't you glad you serve a big God? Amen. Amen. We were in the villages uh, last week. And some of the people were walking around. And the gods they worshipped were in their pocket. And I said, hey, what kind of God fits in a pocket? And some of the others had them hanging above the door to their house. And I asked the pastor, why is it hanging above the, the door of their house? And they said, so the rats don't come and eat it. What kind of God gets eaten by rats? Come on, we serve a big God. We serve Yahweh. The creator of heaven and earth. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. We serve a big God. Amen. Man, I'm so grateful to be here. My name is Jeremy. I'm a grandson to Ron DeVore. Also known as Papa Ron. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Amina. And he started UCOM with uh, Pastor Steve in 1987. And uh, Pastor Robert was a son to my grandfather. So we have spiritual sons. And we have sons that are blood. So that makes Robert and I brothers. So you're all my family. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> As we say in the US, you're stuck with me. Uh, it's been many years since I've been to this campus. Usually when I come to Uganda, I'm traveling to the villages. And so I, I bring greetings from Mama Shirley and from my family. They all love you so much. Let me pray and let's get into the word. God, thank you for the opportunity to be here. We pray your word would be established in our hearts. We ask that our ears would hear the Holy Spirit. And we open up our heart to you. We say, God, your will be done. We want to change. And we want to be who you've called us to be. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. The text that we're going to go through today is found in Matthew chapter 14. You can turn there. We'll put it up on the screen for you as well. But I want to give you some context to what happens here. At the beginning of Matthew chapter 14, John the Baptist is murdered. And John the Baptist is one of Jesus' closest friends. So Jesus had been performing miracles all over. And to get away from the people, it says he started in the northwest corner of the Sea of Galilee. And he took a boat all the way to the northeast corner. And the reason why was to get to a place of solitude. And so Jesus goes to a desolate place. A place where there's nothing. There's no towns nearby. It's desolate. To this day, that area is still desolate. And so sometimes in our life, we can feel like we're in a desolate place. But just 
understand that even Jesus went to a desolate place. And so the people were so hungry for the things of God that the Bible says they followed him along the shore. And now people are in the desolate place with Jesus. And Jesus asked his disciples to test them. He says, how will we feed these people? And Jesus already knew the answer to the test. That's the way the kingdom of God works. When we attend school, we study before the test. Because we want the answer to the test. So when the test comes, we can get a good score. But that's not the way it works in the kingdom of God. The answer always follows the test. So Jesus knew the answer to the question. God knows the answers to our questions before we even ask. And so Jesus had already planned to do a miracle. It's famously known as the feeding of the 5,000. There were more than 5,000 people there. The custom of the day was just to count the men. And so you had children. We know because a small boy came forward. You had women who were there as well. So most scholars believe there was about 15,000 people there. And Jesus takes a small boy's bread and his little tiny fish, their minnows, and he breaks them and he multiplies them. I don't have time to preach on this today. But I want to encourage you that God takes what we have and when we give it to Jesus, He multiplies it exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can hope, ask, and imagine for. So whatever gift you have, whatever finances you have, whatever education you have, surrender that to Jesus. And he will take that. And he will do more with it than you could ever hope or imagine. So we get to the story. We're at the end of multiplying the food. It says that the people go to make Jesus the king. They're ready to usurp Roman rule. Rome was in charge there could be no other king but the people said you are our king now and that's where the story picks up in Matthew chapter 14 and verse 22 it says immediately he made his disciples get into the boats and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds and after he had dismissed the crowds he went up on the mountain by himself to pray and when evening came he was there alone but the boat by this time was a long way from land beaten by the waves for the wind was against them. So Jesus' response to being made a king is, is to put his disciples in a boat and send them to the sea. And rather than becoming king, Rather than becoming an earthly king, he dismisses the people and he goes up to a mountain to pray. And so we receive one of the greatest miracles. And that's the miracle where Jesus walks on water. But part of the story we have to understand is that Jesus sent his disciples into a storm. I want to encourage you this morning that in life, sometimes storms are unavoidable. Sometimes storms are unavoidable. 
Does anybody like storms? Yeah, no one. No one wants to be in a storm. But hardship is part of life. I love the promises of God. And we love to pray them all the time. That by his stripes we were healed. That the peace of God can rest in my heart. That the comfort of the Holy Spirit will come into my my life. That God has a plan and a purpose for me. I love the promises of God. But did you know there's a promise of God that no one likes? I know you're not supposed to say that. Because all the promises of God are yes and amen. That, that means yes and so be it. But one of the promises that Jesus gave us, he said, while you're in this world, you will have trouble. A storm is a promise of God. That as we're following Jesus, that certain storms are unavoidable. But John 14 gives us another promise. It says, let not your heart be troubled. So we can live in a troubled world with an untroubled heart. You can be in the midst of a storm and still have peace. Amen. Amen. Certain storms are unavoidable. And storms are a part of our journey. Some of you here have been through some storms. And you may bear the scars from those storms. It could be a disaster financially. It could be relationship destruction. It could be with your children. Sometimes we go through storms and we carry the, star, the scars from those storms. But we also carry the testimony of those storms. Even if the testimony is you're still here. You're still alive. Praise God, I'm alive. Amen. Amen. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 3. It says, for still the vision awaits its appointed time. It will, not, it will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. For it will surely come. It will not delay. Storms always feel slow. They feel like they'll never end. And that's why we want storms to end. They're uncomfortable. They're not fun. Nobody wants to go through a storm. But here's the truth of it. Every person in the Bible that has endured hardship wished their storm was over. I can't help but think about Elijah who calls down fire from heaven and it consumes the sacrifice and they put to death 300 prophets of Baal and then Elijah gets scared and he runs off and he hides in a cave and he cries cries out to God. He says, take my life. He's in such despair because he's in a storm and he just wants it to end. But God is always with us in our storms. He never leaves us alone. 
And sometimes when we're in a storm, we ask the wrong questions. We ask, what did I do to deserve this? We ask God, where did you go? We ask God, why did you leave me? I think about our friend Job in the Bible. Job had one of the worst days ever. He went through a storm. Not because he did anything wrong. Because God believed in him. And because God believed in him, he got put through a storm. You see, God and the devil were arguing. And the devil said, there's no one righteous. And God said, consider my servant Job. And the devil said, Job only serves you because you protect him. Take your hand off of him and he will curse you. And God said, Try. So God took his hand off of Job and a storm came Job's way. And Job had the worst day of his life. The Bible says that his house collapsed, that all of his children perished, that his livestock died. That all of his cattle die. All of his goats die. All of his things that he planted withered up and die. And then his own wife came to him. And she said, curse God and die. Ladies. No matter how mad your husband makes you, don't say curse God and die. <laughs> Amen. That's not a good wife there. And then Job is left by himself. And for the next 30 chapters, his friends tell him why he deserves what he's going through. You see, they're, they're asking the wrong questions. They're saying, what did, I, what did you do to deserve this? Job didn't do anything to deserve it. If we're not careful, when we get into a storm, we'll learn the, the wrong lesson. I'm just going to read through it. But the Bible tells us in James chapter 5 and verse 11 that the lesson we're to learn from Job is that the Lord is compassionate and merciful. Through all of Job's suffering, the lesson he was supposed to learn from God is that God is merciful and compassionate. No one else in Job's story learned that lesson. When we're in the middle of a storm, we have to stop asking why. Why am I going through this? And we have to start asking, God, what do you want me to learn from this? When our businesses flounder, it's not God, why did you fail me? It's God, what can I learn from this? When our relationships fall apart, the lesson isn't I'll never trust again. It's God, what can I learn through this? It's so important to learn the right lesson when we're in the storms of life. Amen. Amen. Back to Matthew chapter 14. And we're going to pick up in verse 24. Said, but by the boat by this time was a long way from the land. Beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, that's 3 a.m., 
He came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. He said, it's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, Take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. Another one of the gospels says that they were carried to the middle of the sea. The Sea of Galilee was four miles across. And that means they were two miles out from the shore. Whenever I've read this story before, whenever I've read this passage of scripture before, I've always viewed as Jesus was close to the shore. But he wasn't. He was two miles to get to the boat. That is amazing. And so Jesus walks on water. Have you ever tried to walk on water? Has anyone ever tried to walk on water? Has anyone accomplished it? Wave at me if you've walked on water. When I was a little kid, I tried to walk on water. I was raised in church. And the teacher would teach this story. And I thought to myself, I want to walk on water. That seems amazing. So I spent many years not learning my lesson and attempting to walk on water. I was raised in the state of Washington and there's lots of lakes there. It's not as, the lakes aren't as big as Lake Victoria, but, but lots of lakes. And they have docks that they build out into the water. And so me and my brothers, we would get on the dock and we would run as fast as we could. And we'd pump our legs and arms and we'd go as fast as we could and we'd hit the water with our legs moving and I'd sink every single time. I've never walked on water. Jesus Jesus walked on water for many miles. What an amazing miracle. And not only did he walk on water, he did it in the middle of a storm. In the middle of a storm. Remember, half of the disciples were fishermen. These are professionals. Have you ever been in a storm on a lake? Has anyone ever been on a boat in Lake Victoria? Anyone here? Few of you? There are two kinds of storms on Lake Victoria. There's the wind and the waves and the rain. And then there's a whole other kind of storm. It's a swarm of bugs. Anyone ever seen those before? Years ago, I was in a boat and I was on my way to Raji Island and there are these great big boats with little tiny engines. They're so big but so slow. And off in the distance, we saw a dark cloud coming our way. And everyone in the boat starts to cover their mouth and cover their eyes. And I didn't understand what was happening. And this cloud was getting closer. And, and the boat pilot is trying to steer out of the way. But certain storms are unavoidable. And we ran into this storm. And there were millions of bugs. 
And you couldn't see anything. Sometimes we can see the storm coming. And you still can't avoid it. And it's in those moments that we've got to trust Jesus. Remember, Jesus was on a mountaintop. He sent his disciples into the storm. And on the mountaintop, he saw the storm coming. And he didn't rescue them right away. Because when we're in a storm, there's a lesson that we're supposed to learn. It's in the storm that our faith is built. Isn't it true that our faith isn't built in good times? When things are good, we're just grateful. When everything's going fine, we're just grateful there's good, the good times. When your tuition for your kids is paid for, and the matoki is coming, we're grateful for the good times. But when a storm comes, that's when God builds us. That's when our faith is built. Because our faith is proven in the storm. And sometimes we see the storm coming. And we want to avoid it. But we can't. And so we have to trust God. And believe that Jesus is with us in the storm. And that's what the Bible tells us. It tells us that we have to live by God faith and it takes faith to walk in the storm and so Jesus shows up and the disciples are laboring they're working so hard they've been blown off course but Jesus is on the way and he walks on water this is insane Jesus walks on water in the middle of a storm that means waves are going up and down Jesus isn't sinking into the waves he's walking up the waves and down the trough of the waves and back up again for two miles he walks on water and then he comes to his disciples. And we see in verse 28. We see that Jesus makes this so simple. Earlier he said, take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him in verse 28. And Peter answered him. Lord, if it is you. Command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And Jesus immediately reached out. And he took hold of him. Jesus reached out even when Peter sunk. Jesus made this so simple. He said, Come. Isn't that the way that God works? We say, God, I need you. And he says, come to me, all you who are laboring and who are weary, and I will give you rest. We say, God, my yoke is so heavy. My burden is so heavy. And he says, come, take on my burden, for my burden is easy, and my yoke is light. We just have to come to Jesus. We can't solve everything ourselves. It's only when we come to Jesus that we partner with our Father. And then we have access to the power of God. You have to be willing to step out on faith when He says, Come. 
You'll never have all the answers. And here's what's amazing. There are 12 people in the boat. And 11 decided to stay. But only one said, I'll come. On the word of Jesus, I'll step out. And Peter walked on water. It's not always complicated. I heard a quote one time. I heard someone make a quote one time. And they said this. We'd rather learn something new than practice something old. People say, I want the deep things of the word of God. But yet they're not blessing those who curse them. They're not loving their neighbor as their self. They're not being kind to their husband or to their wife. They're not being patient. They're not fulfilling the great commission. Sometimes the most powerful truths are found in the simple truth of the word of God from a statement like, come. So Peter steps out in faith. And he sinks. And Jesus said, why did you doubt? Jesus says he sunk because of his fear. Fear is faith in the wrong what if. Fear is faith in the wrong what if. What if God doesn't show up? What if God fails? What if God doesn't come through? Fear is faith in the wrong what if. But faith is the confident expectation that God will perform his word and that what he promised you he will come through and it doesn't always happen in our timing but if God says he'll do it he will perform his word so when he says he brings healing we believe in faith that he will if that's healing in this life or healing when we stand with Jesus in heaven he performs his word you can trust God in his word have faith in the right what if amen it wasn't Peter's feet that failed him it was his thinking it's what he focused on he started seeing the winds and the waves and his thought about the wind and the waves is that he shouldn't be walking on water and because that was his thoughts he began to sink vision is what you see when your eyes are closed when your eyes are closed how do you picture your marriage when your eyes are closed how do you see your business when your eyes are closed how do you see your children how do you see your finances? What do you see when your eyes are closed? Vision is what we see when our eyes are closed. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your thought life is so important. When when we're in the middle of a storm the things that we think are going to help us or going to hinder us I want to make a statement that sounds strange but it's simply this what do you think about the things that you think about 
You have to think about your thoughts. You have to question your thoughts. So when that voice in your head says you're not worthy, that you're not good enough, that you're not educated enough, what do you think about that thought? It's important. Because the thoughts that we don't subject to the word of God become the thoughts that dictate our life. So if you think I can't, then what you think is true. But if you believe the word of God, that I am fearfully and wonderfully made, that I am more than able to accomplish what God's called me to, then that thought will guide and direct your life. We have to question the things that we think because it says, do not be conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of our mind. Do your thoughts come from the word of God or do your thoughts come from the culture of this world? from Instagram and TikTok from Facebook from the news that we read from our co-workers where we work who is shaping your thinking it's either the culture of this world or it's the word of God Peter had faith in the wrong thing and because of his thinking he floundered in the storm I want to encourage you this morning if you're in the middle of a storm don't give up don't quit don't give up in the storm trust God that he's able to see you through the storms of life because storms are unavoidable but I'd rather be out of the boat with Jesus than in the boat with 11 doubters better to live this life by faith than stay in a boat and have nothing but regrets better to live the greatest life God's called you to than stay safe in all that you've ever known. God has amazing things for you to do. But you got to get out of the boat. you got to get out of what's comfortable. And you got to believe that Jesus is out there in the storm with you. Amen. He's greater than our storm. He's greater than our storm. He's more powerful than your storm. He knew the storm you were about to walk through. And he may have sent that storm your way. Not to cause you hardship, but to build your faith. Because he knew that the storm would shape you for what God had next for you. Amen. I can't help but think about David. David is anointed to be king. He's killed Goliath. And where does he go next? Does he become king? No. He's sent into the king's courts to play the harp. I have no idea how to play the harp. I don't even know what a harp sounds like, to be honest with you. But he plays a harp. Why would God send the future king into the king courts to play the harp? And it says that Saul would be vexed by a demon oppressed by a demon and he would hurl spears at David. So David would play the harp and dodge spears. David's in a storm. But think about it. David was a shepherd boy. He doesn't know how to run a kingdom. So God put him in a place to learn. Listen, if you're a young person here and you want to be in vocational ministry, God will put you in a place to learn. You're not ready yet. 
You're there to learn. Sit under the elders. Play your harp. <laughs> and just learn what God has for you. The storm shape us for what's next. And if we haven't been through enough storms, our faith won't be strong enough to carry us through for God's perfect will for our life. Amen. So storms are unavoidable. Learn how to rejoice in the storm. It's, it's a discipline. It's something we practice. No one during prayer night, no one when we pray, comes to the altar and says, God, send me a storm. Send me tribulation. Send me hardship. No one does that. But we have to learn to find peace in the storm. And we find peace when we follow Jesus. Amen. You can trust Him. You can trust Him in the storm. If you're here right now and you're dealing with a storm and maybe you've even said God take this storm away from me. I don't want to be in a storm anymore. Maybe you've been praying for your marriage. You're here and your husband's not born again and you've been praying God let my husband be born again and you've just wished it would speed up. Maybe your storm is your business. Business. And you started something in faith. And it's been harder than you thought it would be. I want to pray for you today. We can believe God in the storm. And I want you to know you're not alone. You're not alone in the storm. Jesus never leaves us. And he never forsakes us. With every head bowed, if you're here, and you're in the middle of a storm would you just lift your hand wherever you are thank you there's so many of you would you do me a huge favor would you come to the altar so I can pray for you just make your way up here make your way up here we want to pray for you we believe that you can experience God that you can have peace in the storm just make a line Masumba, will you come pray with me as well as I pray over the microphone? Will you help me lay hands on our friends? See, look around you. You're not the only one in a storm. So many of us encounter storms. So many of us are in the middle of it. And we need Jesus. We need the Holy Spirit. We need His strength. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Would you just lift your hands up? There's more than here than I can pray for by laying on a hands. So just receive the prayer I'm going to pray by faith. Father, I pray for my friends. They're in the middle of a storm. And I pray that they will experience your presence. I ask that the peace of God that passes all understanding would rest on their hearts. And we pray right now those who are experiencing fear, anxiety, heartache, and hardship would sense your presence in a real way. God, you said draw near to you and you will draw near to us. And in the same way that Jesus told the disciples to come, these amazing people have come to the altar to experience your presence, to experience your power. And I pray right now that you would be with them. God, that they don't have to be alone. That you have a plan and a purpose for their life. And that even though they feel lost and may even feel forsaken, feel forgotten by others, Lord, they're not by you. That you know exactly 
exactly where they are. That you have a plan and a purpose for their life. God's storms are unavoidable. But we don't have to travel through them alone. You never leave us. You never forsake us. And thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. That you've made us more than conquerors. That we are the head and not the tail. That we are above and not beneath. That we are anointed by you. That we're able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can hope and imagine for. Thank you that we'll tread upon serpents and scorpions. That we'll tread upon all the power of the enemy. That we serve a big God. That we serve Yahweh. The great I am. The King of kings. The Lord of lords. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your power. Just begin to turn those things over to Him. Surrender your cares. Surrender your worries. Surrender your storm. He says that when we cast our cares on Him, that He cares for us. That when we are anxious, that we pray, and after we pray, the peace of God, that passes understanding rests on our hearts surrender your anxiety and experience his love experience his power in Jesus name in Jesus name amen 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 can you Keep around. Keep, her. keep here, keep here, keep here. Don't go. And the rest of us get up on your feet. There's that song from Come and put up your hands. Oh, we give you praise. In the name of Jesus. Arise, my God, Everybody sing. Like a rushing of a mighty wind. A river that has all. Oh, Sunny Demokama. It was the Lord. That's all but flow. Let it 
No matter the size of your storm no matter what you are going through the Lord is able one good thing when the Lord is in the boat the storm will not drown you I pray in the name of Jesus you are going through storms you are going through financial crisis you are going through mega dates I, I don't know what the storm is but I pray in the name of Jesus that as you walk this journey of faith you are not alone come on somebody open your mouth and say God I'm not alone you have given me a promise you have given me a promise though I walk through the waters though I go through the, the fires they will not destroy me I will not be destroyed king of glory for you promised to be with me you have given away Egypt for me you have given, up, given away everything for me king of glory I'm not alone somebody open your mouth and say I'm not alone I gain the confidence to stand I gain the courage to speak my face out somebody begin to speak out your faith speak out your faith I know you are in that crisis I know you have that debt I know there is pain in your body your boss has promised to terminate you your salary is not enough to sustain your heart the money you have cannot pay for fees the food you have is not enough for your children the clothes you have are not enough for you the friends that you have are not enough to help you but God is with you in this crisis you are not alone in a storm the storm is over today this is the day that the Lord is putting an end to the storm if Jesus cannot if Jesus can walk he can make you walk on that circumstance he can make you cross over come on speak out speak out speak out and say God my storm is over my storm is over right now in the name of Jesus my children are going to go to school in the name of Jesus I'm going to have this miracle I'm going to build this house in the name of Jesus I'm going to do this business I'm going to close it in the name of Jesus somebody have two minutes two minutes and the Lord is changing things the storm is over now he says I'm going to go with you and he says in the book of Psalms the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures leads me beside still waters the Lord restores my soul Oh, the Lord restores my soul. He restores my soul. Yeah, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Somebody speak out that psalm. Speak out that psalm. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. I'll fear no poverty. I'll fear no death. I'm making it, I'm making it. I'm making it, I'm making it. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody pray. Pray and say, I'm making it. I have it all, I have it all, I have it all. 
Oh, the shadow of death. The, the shadow of poverty will not destroy me. The shadow of sickness will not destroy me. The shadow of death shall not destroy me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody, somebody speak it out. I'm, I'm making it. My vision is coming to pass. My dream is becoming real in the name of Jesus. Oh my God, oh my God. The shadow of poverty, the shadow of crisis. I'm getting over, I'm getting over. I'm getting over, I'm getting over. I'm getting over, I'm getting over. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, somebody speak your faith. Speak your storm. Speak your storm. Speak your storm. Do not be a Catholic. Be a Pentecostal. Make a prayer of faith. Make a prayer of faith. And, and say I'm making it. I am making it. In the name of Jesus. I'm not gonna die. I'm gonna live. I'll see the goodness of the Lord. In the land of the living. In the land of the living. Yes, 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 Somebody be excited. Oh my God, oh my God. I'm so excited for my miracle. Somebody speak out. This is my season. This is my season. The storm is dying. The storm is dying. Behold, Jesus says, Your storm is over. My storm is over. My storm is over. My storm is over. My storm is over. It is over. Come on, somebody. Declare your victory is today. My victory is now. This storm has not come to destroy me. There is Jesus in the boat. There is Jesus in the boat. Yeah, 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 yeah. I command you, storm. Calm down. Calm down. Storm of poverty. Die off. Die off. In the name of Jesus. You crisis. I speak to you in the name of Jesus. Die. Die. In Jesus' name, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. The storm is over. The storm is over. Storm is over. Storm is over. In the name of Jesus, I command you situation. I don't belong to you. I belong to Jesus. Oh, I belong to Jesus. I may look small. I may look tiny. I may look poor, but there is Jesus in me. Therefore, I'm making it. Everybody, even the background, speak to your storm in the name of Jesus. I command you, Uganda, release a miracle. I command you and charge you right now. Release our destinies. I command you mountains. Release our future. I command you atmosphere. Release our destinies. Uganda, 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 Uganda. Yes. Somebody declare. I am blessed in my nation. I'm blessed in Uganda. My motherland shall bless me. Uganda, Uganda blesses me. Uganda blesses me. Uganda blesses me. Uganda blesses me. In the name of Jesus. 
Come on. Press it. Press it. 45 seconds gone. You have 45 seconds for the Lord to do it in the name of Jesus. Prophesy, prophesy. Prophesy in this situation. Prophesy, prophesy. Say, I have it all. I have my house. I have my land title. Oh, I have it all. In the name of Jesus, I command nations to open. Open the Yes, they open it. Open, open. Open, open up. United States. Open up for me. German. Open up, open up. Come on, charge them, charge them. Charge, 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 charge. Prophesy. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I speak to you all. In the name of Jesus. I don't know what size of storm you are going through but I pray in the name of Jesus. Your storm is smaller. You have a bigger Jesus. Jesus is big and mighty. In the name of Jesus. You are crossing over your Jordan. You cross over your Red Sea. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord make you walk through the desert. In the name of Jesus. I speak into your situation. May this God be your God. May the Lord give you answers. May the Lord Lord bless you, bless you. May the Lord do it, may the Lord do it. In the name of Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Come on, appreciate the Lord. Appreciate him. Appreciate him. Give him a hand offering. I want you to see into your future. You have a miracle. You have a miracle. You have a miracle. You have a miracle. In the name of Jesus. Clap your hands to Jesus. Mugambe wherever they yes. Tell him thank you, Jesus. Somebody shout wherever they yes. Wherever they yes. Somebody shout Asante Sana Mungu. Asante Sana Mungu. Somebody shout wherever they. Wherever they. Ela manoi noi. Ela manoi noi. Wherever they yes. Wherever they yes. Wherever they musengwa. Wherever they musengwa. Be crazy and the devil the grace why he has ever tormented you and they. You are chito sa nyuka kono oleti na nesetani oulili. I said shout hallelujah 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 why don't you intimidate the devil and shout again 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 and shout again, and shout again, and shout again. And hallelujah amen I love the young I love I love I love kids. As we were worshiping there, my kids were doing some crazy dances there. For, for us we were so humble. But then they felt like dancing these styles. These styles. So I and the, uh, uh, the mother tried to you know to caution them, please don't. But that's what the Lord loves to see. Amen. Amen. Don't allow your storm to overwhelm you. Hallelujah. Amen. It has been taken away. Shout, 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 That's what that's how you need to behave. There are people who are humble here, but they are going through a lot. And even Chirimi. if you keep quiet, even if you fail to do nothing, 
It's only Jesus that can help you out. So your face must be this crazy face. Hallelujah. Amen. Give your neighbor a high five and tell him, tell him my storm is over as you go back. My, my storm is over. In the name of Jesus. Go and get your seat briefly. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. Pastor Jeremy Carpenter. We are really so much blessed. Can you appreciate the Lord for the message you have just heard? Amen. That was so powerful. I'm not alone in the storm. Some storms are unavoidable. Hallelujah. Amen. But when they come, they have not come to finish you. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus says, yes, the sick person won't die. But his sickness is for, for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Uh, let's have some announcements. We shall have some announcements. Amen. Amen. All right. So we have daily prayers in this place. We have an altar in this place. And, and the people have been persistent coming. So we want to encourage all of us. Please keep on coming. Uh, we shouldn't force you to, uh, to be prayerful but we are in a, a season of seeking God so if you choose to stay back you are, you are cheating yourself so we have prayers from Monday to Friday and a lot of people turn up so on Monday we have some uh, specific prayer item we pray for our businesses and those who want who, who, who hope to be billionaires so we pray for our businesses every Monday hallelujah Amen. so again uh, Thursday last Thursday we had we had uh, our family prayers here. We are praying for our families. And many people, a lot of people turned up. But So I don't know where you hide yourself. So this uh, particular Thursday, we request you to write down your prayer items, things you want God to deal with in your family. Put them on a plain paper like this. And maybe put them in an envelope. Then come with them on Thursday. We shall, we shall keep them very well and be laying hands on them until God delivers your family. So you don't need to miss coming this, this Thursday in Jesus' name. And uh, we also have uh, the youth overnight every Friday. Uh, we, we, we begin with the, uh, the altar that usually happens every day. And there are people who end, at, uh, end their prayers at, at around 9.30 and go home. But others stay back and join the youth and pray through the night. So we encourage you to be part of, uh, of these nights. And uh, we're going to have uh, yes, tomorrow we, 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 we had planned to meet as ministers 
hoping that it will, it will be a holiday but you know the Muslims their things are not they are not always so the big day was today so tomorrow is not a big day you need to go for work so we shall announce when the minister's meeting will happen in Jesus name so ministers don't come tomorrow for the, for the meeting then on 29th we are going to still come here for a mega, mega, mega prayer, family prayer. It's going to be so powerful again. So come with all your family members. On 29th, we are going to be here praying for families. More and more again. So you, need, you don't need to miss out it's not only for the married people all of us here belong to a family so you are requested to attend on 29th Time beginning at uh, we are starting at 10 up to 6 then um we shall not have a meeting on 30th. The, the marriage, we are meant to be here on 30th. Okay. The following day on 30th, we shall all go to Coping Hotel. So all the married people, you know what to do. You, you got to pay 15000 each one of you, that's 30,000. Um, what am I missing to say? Then, wow. Those are the announcements we had for June. Then on, on Saturday, this Saturday, we have our own people that are going to get joined here. Where is Emma and Lydia? Stand up and wave. And Lydia. They are getting married on Saturday. So please we ask you. Stand with them. If you haven't supported them yet, please support them. Check on them, give him some 50k, some 10k. Now I speak as their father. Uh, Emma is my young brother. Support my brother to go and win. Amen. Please support him. Today is their last meeting. Think of anything and give them. So that they will be they will have their ministers together with us. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's it. Um Robert Kasozi. Our Pastor Robert Kasozi. Sends greetings every day. He will also be online. Ask him to pray for you. How many of you pray for him? Never been a church where you can't pray for the pastor. Amen. Amen. We need to pray for him every day. What's the nature of you? Are you ready with your offering? offering? I will not tell you, show it to me. But I want you to pack your offering very well. To are going to be giving in the house of the Lord. As we are giving him, where is Mrs. Wamala? Where is these two baskets please put your offer to and, and support the gospel now this one is for construction 
put some money getting ready for the Lord to, to, to build for you a house Hallelujah. I so much want to look into it as a priest here the Lord told me I will, I, I will feed for the house so we don't build for him a house where will I eat from so I look into this one Let's stand on our feet and give. Even you who doesn't have cash, please uh, stand up. Standing up is also an offering. Media team, our contacts. And numbers, you these numbers, we also use them to give our offers. So those who are using Momo Pay, Send Wave, especially you are watching from Diaspora, you can connect your tithe, your, 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 your offerings on this. They are uh, uh, 07775. Uh, six five five six one. Yeah. Then it will reflect Robert Kasozi. And your money will come here. So don't put your money elsewhere. If you send it elsewhere, that's a love offering for someone. So come and give as I pray. I bless these people, King of Glory. Come and give. In the mighty name of Jesus, I bless the works of your hand. Come as in the Lord In the mighty name of Jesus, God bless you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I bless your businesses. I bless your family. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, may the Lord deal with the devourer. Anything that is destroying your finances, anything that takes away your promotion, I defy it in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak a blessing in the works of your hands. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, clap your hand to Jesus Christ as I appreciate. A moment, take up your seats. A moment. We are going home, uh, but we have, you know, security around. It's raining. You can't go now. On twenty-third, all the men, the men in this house. Abasaja Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> that twenty-third is our day. We are going to lead the service. Keyboard playing. Hear everything. Ushering. Special music. That is our day. Women, please, you are invited. We are going to take you in the spirit. You are going to leave this place not to be. Men of Kawempi are going to minister on the 23rd. Fever to Gaman, the Mabagan of Quez, the Fenatuka, the Galanim, the Magala Cousin, and Mikono, Kutuma Lamoma, neither to Japa, we will serve you no matter what. Hallelujah, Amen. Kakadira, Balukwe, Balukwe Kolako, so we are doing practices. Chijakubachi, it will be so great. A Chirale, a Chimuku Sembayo. Lastly, a Chimuku Sembayo. Second, lastly. Uh, please take it. Kati mwangu eko mlinyali ya Yesu. Temulua wano. 
Mwa oboli na kusente jelete Mkusabi de mulinyali ya yesu yangu wako Yangu wako Yangu wako Bana imu wangu we mpangu la sente Nyingi nyonti pangu la yesende mkama kuwa mkisa Mkama kuwa mkisa mwana wange Bana ite tuguliramu genyira yangu wa yangu wa yangu wa <coughs> Mkama haba uwa mkisa Jayo kusente jayo kusente jayo kusente Kama kuwa mkisa Kama kuwa mkisa Aleluya Chamanye ju chamanye ju Mutaba ni mkama kukula kula nye Mama weba le weba li dedala Mwangu we Naweza Echo kulianga chia mzungu chiba chivu wera wera koso katise china wera bulu unji Mwangu we ko ingini ya mkama kukule debi nene nebi ya mani Eh mkama kuzimbele kalina Mkama kuwa mkisa mlinyali ya Yesu Christo mwana katondo mlamu Eh mkama kukule debi ya magero Musao mkama kukula kula nye E tufunye funye uko butini tini na ye Mweba li redala mkama bambe li doma Echo kulia Omanye echo kulia bagula Bagula bimerika Bio kulia viliso Tebilinge bia fenti omotu walu kufuwa mwe miera Aleluya Kupila yesu wengale zama Mwanzi jeke chibbo chino Mweba li Tuwala na echebe chogenda na chuo Enkube etonye It is raining and we got you a saddle family. <laughs> but the service is done. Now I request of you when you go back home, support the Emmas. Please support them. Please 